four and a half years ago, almost to the day, I got sober. <laughs> I almost immediately shaved all my hair off and was a little nuts doing unusual things as shown here. Going to go get in an MRI machine to let the psychology department at MU do a study on me. It's a study on autism and I'm getting paid $75. When you've been drunk and high for 10 years, you're kind of like insulating yourself emotionally and you're kind of patting your heart and all that stuff starts melting away. And when you're kind of fresh to the world and raw, you're, you're, you're kind of, this is at least my experience, you're kind of like feeling feelings again for the first time. And it's a lot, it's a fucking lot. And as a writer and as a musician, I just was like, what's, what's the story I have that isn't told yet? <laughs> In my mind, instead of obsessing, I decided to just write one big rock opera about this, almost as a way to set it aside and deal with it once and for all. Um, and I wanted to share that story with you now. I never learned to be in healthy romantic relationships. Going in, I had a girlfriend that would slap me, say horrible, threatening things, and I kind of got caught in that whatever, dynamic. And so moving from there, it was like older women, uh, like a 23-year-old when I was still in high school, and then eventually this like female teacher. Um, so by the time I got to college, I just had no gauge of what real love looked like. So meeting who we will call A was eye-opening, just that she was into me and that's it. You know, no, manip no manipulative stuff, uh, no weirdness. Uh, none of that power dynamic that I was used to being around here was very comforting. I first saw her on campus in overalls playing harmonica to a group of people and just being very funny and very fun. And our relationship was based on our mutual love for being around punk rock people, uh, trying new things, playing in bands together. We were young and idealistic so it was almost a joke it was like we'd stay together almost every night but then say well if you don't see me tomorrow that's it can't hold it against me you know i might not see you tomorrow and we did that for almost a year and we lived about one block from each other and one day she was late for band practice and she wasn't there she wasn't there she never showed up and i wasn't supposed to be concerned because it was all you know whatever if i don't see you, i don't see you but it just wasn't the pattern that we that we had set. So I started calling her friends, and then nobody would seen her. I was trying to ignore it. Band practice again. She's not there. I'm like drinking a 40 of malt liquor, smoking a joint, trying to ignore this looming fear in the back of my mind. And uh, two mutual friends came downstairs and interrupted, interrupted band practice. And I knew by the look on their face that some, something horrible had happened with her. And they'd been watching the news and seen that a Jane Doe had uh, been hit by a car on her bike. And they were looking to see if anybody knew who she was. And it matched the description. So, high and drunk, I had to call the hospital. They kind of confirmed my suspicions. Then I went in and, with a police officer, looked at photos of her. And her face was swollen up could barely recognize her, and I had to say, I think that's her. Deal with this asshole cop. Showed me the bike, which was a bike that I said I would fix the brakes on that I never had. It was basically a kid's bike that she was trying to ride. Going down a hill to my house, got sideswiped by this car, and she'd cracked her skull open, and I went to see her, and they'd put her in an induced coma um, that lasted a week. At first, all her friends were around, but her friends were troubled people. They were coke addicts, and they were party people. And so after the first day or two, that, that support kind of dissipated as they just sat around watching her sleep and hanging out in the waiting room. It got old really quick. And I just would go every day and talk to her. Eventually... She came out, and we didn't know what to expect. Though there was severe brain damage, she ended up even eventually finishing her college classes and getting a degree. And I'm happy to say that she now lives a really healthy life and is a very happy person. But she's not the same person 
that I knew. I love that new person, but I lost the first love of my life. This album is the conversations I had to her as she slept. And it's trying to get out of my head what I went through very much on my own for that week while she was in a coma and I was trying to get her out of it and get back the person I loved. It's a battle that I eventually lost in many ways, but I'm still very happy with the outcome and very proud of her. And I'm happy to be able to finally share that story that so few people in my life have ever heard. Connect my soul to your ears and use my This thing took forever to make. First I record myself playing guitar. Then I played bass over it and then I played drums over that. And then I picked the order. So I did everything wrong. Every way I went about this, I hate how I did it and I will never do it that way again. Recording started when I moved in with Libby, I took my bedroom and I put the mattresses against the wall and just converted it into a full-time studio. I was like, this is all I'm gonna do. I'm just gonna plug away until it's done. I was overwhelmed. Uh, brought some guitar stands, brought the other guitars over. It's dead. Ah, uh, well. Then we move into this nice house, my house with Libby, the Ladybug Graveyard, and I record here. What I'm doing here, uh, recording wise, instead of writing it down, I've demoed everything. So I have like a series of like 20 different videos for all the different parts. You can kind of hear an atmosphere. It's, it's not perfect. It's not isolated, but that's okay. I'm okay with that. That kind of adds check texture. I'm nervous. So I wasn't getting enough done at home. So I decided to isolate myself and be a little more official. And so here we are in Kat's new TV studio. We've aimed the amp in a really funny, strange way, which is right into the control room, just because that's the most quiet air. We liked the sound. Um, it should be good. The pressure is on. The universe does not want me to finish this project. The card on that camera just got full. Everything is going wrong. This thing keeps falling apart <laughs> and I'm so happy that it's now on you to absorb and out of my hair at the same time maybe this was just too big of a story to tell maybe it was too big of a project for one person this is a lesson you're hearing a work in progress that would have, that could have hypothetically never ended I could have kept making this better it never would have stopped. Guys, the awful and awful to make, but beautiful and honest, don't die, I love you. Break!